I have no idea about it. It's true that Sumit sir will teach about it, but I think ideally I should have some brief idea what he is going to teach about. So I used to look on that top hundred uh, interview questions on this topic. And what were topics? What I used to like prepare like easily. Like if there were like say ten topics that I mentioned the JD, I used to like uh, easily see hundred hundred question on each topic. It again it was regarding linking the data bricks to the Azure as in the key vault service. You know how to you can link the let's say ADF to the services app registration. and also you can you know set up tokens and create mounts so please do not ever stop you know learning please learn the new the new promising technologies which are coming in the world which you think can be used which are going to be used this way you can stay updated with the the with the world so hi venus a very warm welcome thank you for being a part of the session to share your experience uh, about the big data domain Um, so can we get started with your introduction? A brief, uh, you know, about your background and your educational qualification, work experience, um, and also you mentioned that uh, you were kind of apprehensive about programming initially, right? In your initial yes. graduation days, what gave you the confidence to build a career in the same field that you were like kind of had the most fear about? Yeah. So first of all, uh, as you might introduce, my name is Venus Bhushan. I did my college in KIT University. It's located in uh, Bhuvaneshwar. I am a twenty twenty two pass out, and my branch was electronic and computer uh, computer science. A company called Hyradius. It's a fintech unicorn. I uh, came for a apprenticeship in my company, and so I got selected for the apprenticeship inter, uh, initially. And over there, uh, they gave us a full stack AI. The full name was AI B two B full stack uh, prediction for the rate uh, type of uh, repayment of that use. So when I got internship at Hyradius. So by the end of second or third week, I got got to offer for uh, data engineer intern from Musk as well, and I was very happy to join that. All right, yeah. So basically, you uh, in your initial days itself, when you are graduated, I mean, like during your graduation days itself, you got exposure to work on many of the projects as an intern as well, right? So yes. how was your initial days at Musk? Yes. Uh, I mean, did you face any challenges as such? Uh, how did you navigate uh, through this learning curve? Uh, since you were interested towards data engineering, you had an option to choose between software engineering and data engineer, and definitely data engineering was your uh, priority. And how did you like kind of uh, meet the expectations of uh, the company? And um, you know, how did you get uh, to work on the projects as well? Yeah, so initial days were pretty hard for me. I won't lie about it, because whatever I worked until now. was totally different from what i was exposed to the level of you know how to put it the work the expectations the technologies was pretty high something like that i had never seen the spark the you know the parallel processing the distributed processing nothing came like made any sense to me and was actually kind of lost for two or three months it went but i okay but then it came moment okay but this is enough i want to learn so i started exploring the google google for you know how to be good data engineer I came across various articles, but did not how to put it. It was not very organized. Then I think one of the LinkedIn posts I saw the big data course by Sumit sir, Trend Tech. So I just browsed through it, read about it on the LinkedIn articles. Many people had written about this on Quora, and bit I also found from the Google like reviews. So I actually had a call with one of your Trend Tech's old uh, like pass out, and I think he is right now uh, in PepsiCo. as a senior engineer and the way he told me about the course i was pretty convinced that it should be good for me as in a way that it brings everything in a good package in organized way so then i took the pack, uh, took this into course by its mid sir and i must say by like one and a half months or so because i was working as well uh, the working hours i would say initially were hard for me because i was not able to perform as good i should be i should, i should be Like personally, I wasn't very happy with the performance I was making. I can't say about the others, but I wasn't happy for, from my own performance. So, I took the course, and yeah, I must say the like in simple words, it's that earlier I used to write the code. I wasn't aware what was happening in the backend, what was actually Spark doing to make the you know make the show run. After the course, I had a brief like very good idea, crystal idea, idea that okay, what should I do to make it better? better optimized these all the things i could see and you know see in real time uh, in my mind at least and i was you know able to perform very good 
So you enrolled for the Big Data Masters program by Sumit Sir at Trinity Tech. Could you uh, kind of share some highlights of the course uh, that kind of uh, were valuable uh, in terms of your learning journey? Maybe uh, the technologies or the teaching style, if you could uh, let us know what exactly helped you uh, in gaining the necessary knowledge. The best part I would say is that the the course was very organized. Right? I could you know click on Spark and see Spark. Suppose uh, the the suppose I know Scala because Sumit sir course also had Scala in it, and Scala was something I knew already. Like I learned it during my internship days, and I knew I did not have to go through that. So I just skipped that part and was able to go to the next lesson. Like next lesson, this is like how to put it. Uh, this organization helps me to learn what I want. and see what i am about to learn suppose uh, some there is some next topic and i have no idea about it it's true that sumit sir will teach about it but i think ideally i should have some brief idea about he is going to teach about so i used to look on that and also apart from that uh, the courses were able to not just provide the knowledge they also provide some things that are very important and really talked about for example earlier i used to think that hadoop had replaced spark It's what I knew, what I thought was true, but this is not that case. And thanks to Smith sir, this was was actually asked to me uh, later on when I joined back Musk after leaving. So I was you know able to crack interviews based on the, these you know, small small things that Smith sir had taught. That that the fundamentals, how, what Spark does behind the scenes, how it is so fast that people are using Spark now, and they have you know left the old uh, te- uh, technologies in favor yes, of Spark. Okay. So that was a very good, uh, you know, like uh, it's very important that you have the foundational knowledge right, so that you can even learn the advanced uh, concepts really well. So, well, I see that a lot of uh, enthusiasts, data enthusiasts, especially who are on similar, uh, you know, like uh, experience as you, uh, they go through this interview phase and they uh, they have a lot of challenges that they come across with. So, could you brief us about your interview phase and the steps that you followed to get good number of opportunities, whether it is in terms of drafting the resume or even applying on several portals? Which was the best portal that you could get good quality calls? How did you strategize your uh, interview phase? So, I would say for resume part, it is good to have a simple resume, you know, not to put hundreds of jargon in it that has no sense to it. That is true. It is true that ATS is there; it works, but. just if you think that you can put everything on resume and to think that it will you know get your very high score is not how it works and i remember uh, seeing sumit sir post on this a few days ago and like i would request the audience to please go through that and see on it and second thing i would say keep it crisp crisp simple and try to keep the job resume relevant to the job you are applying applying to suppose you are applying to a job you know that focuses on azure so in that case you should prepare resume that if you again if you know azure then only should add it to your resume and second thing for the interviews make sure the fundamentals are good suppose you are applying for a data engineer role you should not expect the first question that they are going to ask you is to design pipeline or you know uh, make some model of it some complex that is not how it happens for me at least the starting is fundamental you should know what spark is what spark works and many people are like uh, how to put it sql is something that people you know just kind of ignore but it is not that way from what i faced even the applying for data engineer uh, role i was asked a lot of sql question sql queries you know how to optimize the sql query and also somehow uh, like uh, i think a year back sumit sir has uploaded a video on this as well and it's free of cost so you can watch from our tech youtube channel shout out to them for this and this is something you should know fundamental is something that you should prepare on i just you know would say only one thing back in college people were going like behind this you know crazy for these course of ai ml you know ar and stuff but this is not what is asked in the interview they don't ask you to design some ar application out of college as a fresher of one or two years they want to know your fundamentals how good are you in the basics because without a good uh, building you know the base of building the building won't last it will fall for sure So fundamentally, something you should really focus upon and make sure you are in robust yeah. state. Perfect. So yeah, uh, that was a good uh, explanation how you can prepare for your uh, interviews definitely. So what, as per your experience, are the top most technologies one should have an expertise in to become a successful big data engineer? Yeah, surely, for someone like me, you know, who has experience for let's say less than two years. So 
the the expectation is not very high but that does not mean you should not start uh, prepare well because the truth is the you know the level the low the question is asked that also is proportional to your package so if you are able to answer higher you know difficult questions then you can get a, you can you know get a upper hand in terms of negotiation in salary as well so so make sure as if like uh, someone has a low experience prepare sql well okay and sql as well as python you don't have to know the oops concept of python you don't know not you know, need to know the algorithms you know, the knapsack problems the divide and rule you don't need to know that you need to know how to do basic scripting in python and spark is what you should focus you know in terms of uh, let's say what are the file formats that, that are supported let's say parquet and delta so what are the difference between delta file and parquet file so i was asked this question myself and I suppose like how are the old version of the delta file stored so these are the small things that you should focus upon while preparing you know what i did personally that before every interview i used to open the you know google on google and search i used to look at the jd and i used to like type okay top 100 uh, interview questions on this topics and what were topics were i used to like prepare like easily like if there were like say 10 topics that are mentioned in the jd i used to like uh, easily see 100 100 question on each topic easily so yeah prepare is uh, like prepare is something you should do like robustly and should be uh, you know you should expect questions that are asked oftenly in a way that uh, like no one will ask you something out of the blue that really happens so you should try to prepare for something that is asked often not something that is rarely asked to improve your chances of selection that is true out of 100 if you give 10 interviews one person might might ask that thing out of the blue but those nine people won't ask that so you should prepare on the what you should max people are maximum people ask to you perfect yeah yeah so uh, as you mentioned to summarize on sql is important python is important spark which is a distributed processing framework that is very much important so uh, have you faced any uh, questions around uh, cloud services as well uh, because we see that a lot of uh, you know projects they are taking up uh, cloud in order to work on big data related projects so Did you face any yes. questions around cloud, and is it important? Yes, I actually faced some like interview questions for the, on the Azure cloud. It again, it was regarding linking the data bricks to the Azure as in the key vault service. You know how to you can link the let's say ADF to the services app registration, and also you can you know set up tokens and create mounts. I mean these things are very basic, I would say. But can we ask? And it is expected you you should answer it because. These are very basic question. If if you are not able to answer this, then this would mean that you really haven't done anything. You know, you are kind of spoon fed. I would say uh, the best way to put it. Right. So uh, when you were trying to apply for the interviews, that was the layoff phases uh, as such. In fact, so from getting laid off to rejoining Musk again, your journey had its own share of ups and downs, right? So how did you cope up with this layoff, and what lessons did you get to learn from your experiences? Yeah. First thing I would say. never get panicked if you are late off it's not the end of the world the world is not to you know not for uh, like fall apart tomorrow you have time if you have skills no matter how bad the condition is you can get a job again if you are good you are few the best you are among the best then you can get a job for sure because uh, again it is true that uh, you know several companies did lay, did lay off be it google amazon musk you know most did lay off but it does not mean that people who got laid off will not be able to get employed So the next step is to prepare a good resume. You know, keep the points that are required that you are really good in, and that is also asked in the let's say uh, you are applying for a job that asks let's say Spark and Kafka, and if you know both of them, you should add it differently. So keep try to keep your resume as per the JD. Second thing I would ask to say is you know have a good uh, professional professional network. It should not be that you know you do the work and just get back in the office. You should be having good terms of people around you because you might not know. when you might need their help or when they might need to help and this is a good example of being a human like humans are social animals and i think this is something we forget sometimes and we, you know people just go to the office and come back i i i till really don't like i mean it's not recommended from my side i would say the third thing i would say uh, suppose you give an uh, interview and you get rejected it's a very good practice to ask from the person who like the hr like if you rejected to at least get your reason why you know you got rejected so that the next time you don't do the same mistake again and again you know taking feedbacks it's like a cycle the more you take feedback the more you can improve yourself with time 
while applying for uh, interviews the portal i would recommend for good companies is linkedin again nokri has jobs be it uh, you know monster.com it also has job but linkedin has at, i would say our companies that come on linkedin are completely better that can once again uh, be it uh, nokri.com or uh, this monster jobs companies are good there no shout but what i have seen personally the companies on linkedin are a bit tired up than the other companies nice no, excellent um, the feedbacks uh, importance of feedbacks when you kind of fail in any of the interviews that will help you in improving yourself in the uh, in the further opportunities that was a very good te- uh, key take away from uh, this session as well uh, but the next thing is i would like to know about uh, maybe at a high level if you could uh, let us know about the projects and the tech stacks that you have worked on so far so again my preference of coding is uh, sql so i prefer to use parse sql just for the context so the basic thing i used was azure with was a cloud provider and you know and the i used to run, like the spark that we used to use it uh, used to run on uh, like was the databricks actually so databricks version of spark it has some you know some fine tuning of its own we can you know just access the storage the adls what we call directly from like easily so doing that was very easy using the databricks also apart from that like sql as in the sql server we used to use the for a database part and I also used mongodb redis these are no sequels and kafka is something i have like used very lightly for this so mainly i would say my work used to move around spark the the python bit of scripting here and there to move, move the data and you know pass some values the conditional rendering and the, the conditional checking stuff spark uh, logic apps it's a application in uh, azure and sharepoint again it's an application in uh, this Uh, Azure itself, Azure Cloud, and yeah, I would say, I mean, again, I haven't worked on much, uh, much, much uh, this tech stack four or five, but apart from this, like parallelly, I've been learning a lot. Uh, like I have done like a bit of Node, not I would say bit, quite of Node, Node JS, React, and worked also parallelly with them in uh, this Redis, MongoDB, and parallelly also started learning uh, exploring AWS, the cloud platform. That's nice. So, yeah. so you extensively got to work on Azure Cloud as well, and many of the companies are also looking. Uh, I mean, they're working on Azure-related projects as well. Yeah. Great. So, uh, finally, would you like to share any tips for all the aspirants who are looking forward to build a career uh, in the data field? Yeah, sure. So, first of all, I would say it is true the age of age of AI is coming. That is very true. Second thing is that the AI does not train on AI. It needs data. It needs clean data. it needs continuous data to flow to it so for that data engineer are the one who can actually do it because the managing data at a very very high high scale and very high velocity is maybe not something that every person in every domain can do so i would recommend you so if you are you know confused what to do for if you consider it data analyst or data engineer please go for data engineer it's a much better field to work in second thing uh you know if you are looking to work in data engineering field is this i would say in simple terms the data engineering field is very fast evolving in a way that 10 years ago 20 years, uh, 20 years ago when spark was not there there was hadoop there were mahout there were many multiple you know separate uh, so, uh, like application for this with time spark came and also even like 10 years from now there could be something else so please do not ever stop you know learning please learn the new the new promising technologies which are coming in the world which you think can be used which are going to be used this way you can stay updated with the the with the world because if you have like uh, you know gone through linkedin you would have surely seen posts where people how to put it are haven't got a job for last year they are laid off one year ago two years ago and they haven't got a job the reason again what i think could be that people are not willing to change with time and this is something i really think should not be there with time you should change because time is going to move forward if you won't move forward time will you know keep you behind and that everyone will go ahead of you that's how i think perfect uh, venus it was a pleasure talking to you got to learn a lot from your experiences as well and uh, you have shared a lot of your experience which is very much insightful for a lot of aspirants who are planning to build a career in the data engineering field thank you so much for your time and we wish you loads of success in your future endeavors as well thank you